The last dog's name is Smokey. He is a cute little black dog. He's a Dalmatian. He has long ears, and he's a very happy dog. But last night, Smokey walked away from his backyard and didn't come home. So we have a very sad group of people living in the neighborhood who want to find the puppy. And what we're going to do is we're going to go from door to door and ask everybody if they know where Smokey is. And each one of them will try to tell us where Smokey is, and we hope before the end of this story that we'll be able to find the little lost dog. But before we do, we'd all like to start the story by all singing a very nice song that we all know called, Oh Where, Oh Where Has My Little Dog Gone? And now, with a one and a two and a three, we'll sing the song. Ready? With a one. And now, with a one and a two and a three, we'll now sing the song, Oh Where, Oh Where Has My Little Dog Gone? Oh, where, oh, where's my, my little dog gone? Oh, where, oh, where can he be? Where can the tail find his tail so fine? Oh, where, oh, where can he be? And now we start to check on where little Smokey went. And in order to do that, we have to go to this first house here on the street. Let's go up and knock at the door. I notice on the name of the door it says Kempton. So this must be the Kempton family. Let me knock at the door. Knock, knock. Hello. Is your name Allison Kempton? Yes. Allison, I'm checking on a little lost dog that's missing. Do you know what the dog's name is? Smokey? Yes, that's right. And Little Smokey was out last night playing. Do you know why he might have run away? Well, he was chasing a little butterfly. He was chasing a butterfly. Oh, what color was the butterfly? Um, black and white and orange. Black and white and orange. Did you notice if the butterfly flew out of the yard? Yes, it did. Well, now, Allison, that's very good. I'm glad at least that you saw that he was chasing a butterfly. Let's ask somebody else in your family if they know anything about it. Uh, what is your name? My name is a butterfly. My name is a butterfly. My name is a butterfly. Okay, your name is Chris. My name is Chris. Chris, did you see the butterfly? Yeah. Did you see Smokey? No, Smokey said it was the did he go fast or slow? Slow, but then the bears. I see. And how about the butterfly? Did the butterfly then chase him? Butterfly then the bite. Well, that did the butterfly bite him then? Bite him on the leg and the tail. What did Smokey do? Smokey do. Well, I think this is beginning to tell us a little bit more about the mystery, right? Smokey the monkey says him as a guitar and says Smokey. Well, thank you very much. Well, now, I think that we've really gotten some good information from both Allison and Chris, and I think that this has been a very interesting house that we've visited. It's thrown a lot of weight on the mystery. Now, let's go to the last person in the Kempton family, Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi. Hey, Brian, uh, I've heard quite a bit about uh, Smokey uh, going out chasing the butterfly. Did you see this affair? Yes. You did. Did you see butterfly, the Smokey ch chasing the butterfly? Yes. Can you tell me anything about it that these other two haven't said anything about? Um, Smokey dig a hole under the fence, and then he got out of it. Oh, that explains it. He dug a hole under the fence. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I see. And did the butterfly go under the fence, too? No, he fled over the fence. He fled over the fence, and then butterfly, and smoke, I mean, Smokey went under the fence. Yes. I see. And uh, did you see Smokey go under the fence then? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Did he go towards the Hennig house? Yes. Yeah. Oh! Well, now, this is very interesting. Now we seem to have known why Smokey left the backyard of the Kemptons. He was chasing a butterfly. He dug a hole and went under the fence into the Hennig's yard. So I'm going to go next door here and knock at the door and talk to the Hennig's for a minute. Knock, knock. Uh, hello, is your name Gene Hennig? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jean, did you notice a hole under your fence this morning? Yes. Uh, do you know what caused it? Yes. What? 
well, a little a little dog. He was black and I don't um and the tail it was high and and he was chasing a butter he was chasing a butterfly and then and then when he came in he came in my backyard and the and the butterfly um laid down on this kind of a flower and and he and and he um you know jumped on the flower and you know got and then this um, the butterfly flew and and he he went running and jumped over the gate the next time and the next time I saw him he went he went to this other house I don't know it it was some kind of house. Oh, then you mean to say that he went right through your yard chasing the butterfly? Yeah. Oh, wh are we sure it's the same dog? Yes. What color was it? Black. Uh, what kind of ears? Long ones. I think it was. Do you think it might have been a Dalmatian or a... Uh, a it looked like a Dalmatian. Did anyone call Smokey? Yes, a girl next door. Well, they 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 came over in my yard and they and they said, "Have you have you seen a little dog this black?" And I said, "It just jumped it just jumped over the gate." Okay. Well, thank you very much. Wow, this is very interesting. Now, it seems like the doggy ran right through the Hennig's backyard. Let's just double check with one other person in the Hennig family to make sure this is correct. Now, just a minute now. Here's a young man. Looks like, is your name John Hennig? Yes. Oh, John, uh, your sister has told a, a, a pretty long story about the dog running through the yard. Uh, did you see the same thing? No, because he ran. The last time I saw him, he was running through the house when I was sitting down watching TV. And then he ran out. He went, ran through all through the house and went out the back door, and that was the last time I saw him. Oh, so in other words, maybe Jeannie was a little bit mistaken that he didn't run right through the yard. He ran into the house. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. And what rooms did he run through, do you know? My bedroom, and he went through the hall to the back. I hope he didn't leave any messes along the way. <laughs> well, I haven't looked. Has your mother looked? No, not yet. Okay, you want to tell her to go look? It, well, it happened so fast, I didn't even have time to look. I see. Where was where was your sister Pinky at this time? Um, well, she was uh, out uh, uh, on the other side of the house when the dog went on the other. He, see, she was on one side and she, uh, uh, in the back, and, and, and the dog was running on the other side. So she may have seen a little bit more than you did. Yes. Good. Well, let's go over and talk to Pinky. Uh, hi, Pinky. Hi. How are you? Good. Hey, Pinky, we're having a lot of trouble trying to find a little lost dog by the name of Smokey. Um, yes. Uh, uh, your sister and your brother both saw Smokey running through the yard there last night. Did you see him, too? Yes, he came through my yard, too. He did. Did you see him come running out the back door like your brother said, or did he run right through the backyard like your sister said? Yes. Very good. I'm glad at least we got that cleared up, huh? Yes. Did you uh, Did you try to catch him? Yes. Good. Did he have a butterfly chasing him? Yes. Uh, what color butterfly? Um, it was um, orange and red and um, yellow and yeah, yeah, yellow. That must have been a different one than the one that the Hen the Kempton saw, don't you think? Yes, because you know why that that another one came, another one came to to my house. Oh, and where did you see him run? Did he run into somebody else's yard? He ran into my yard and he ran into my um, house and then he ran out the um, the back door. Oh, do you know what the name of the people's house that he ran to? Uh huh? Do you know what house he ran to? Um, the, the Burns house. Oh, they live next door to you? Yes. Okay, then let's go next door and talk to them, okay? Okay. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Pinky. Okay, Pinky. <laughs> Well, now I think we've got uh, the dog uh, pretty well narrowed down to the Burns' backyard. Let's go into this house and ask the Burns if they know anything about it. Knock, knock. Uh, hello there. Now, what is your name? Susan. Uh, Susan, do you live here? Yes. What's your last name? Burns. Oh, you're one of the Burns girls? Yes. Susie, uh, the Hennigs next door said that they saw the dog be chased by an, an orange butterfly over into your yard. Did you see that? Yes. Oh, you did. Did you uh, see Smokey? Yes. What color is Smokey? He's black. Uh, and long or short ears? Long ears. Part Dalmatian. Part Dalmatian. And, and part what? Um, Beagle and part 
Laughing door. Thank you. Uh, did you did you touch Smokey at all when he came into your yard? Yes. And I let him go into the house, and I felt he was so tired. I fed him, and I didn't make him go out of the house. I just let him in, and then he wept. But I took him out, and he just. And then I let him in again. I hope you didn't say he wet. Well, not not in the house. Uh, out in the backyard. Yes. Does the mother know that you had him in the house? No. What would she say if she knew you had her in the house? <coughs> oh, well, uh, did you give him anything to eat? Um, yes. Let's go to your other sister uh, and see whether she knows anything about it. Well, this is very interesting now because Susan said she brought him into the kitchen and we still don't know what she did with him after that. Let's talk to Susan's sister, Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi. Mary, uh, did you see Smokey last night? Yes. Uh, where did you see him, Mary? He was he was in our house. He, I mean, he's going out the back door, and I I, I didn't think he should, because he was going to go to the next yard. So I put him in the house. I don't know where he went to then. You don't know where he went in the house then, huh? Yeah. You think he could still be in the house? Yeah, I suppose. Hey, this is real interesting. Now this is a real mystery. Maybe what we ought to do, Mary, is check with uh, your brother and see whether he knows anything about it. What do you think? Yeah, I think he does. Well, let's check then. Well, I guess probably the last thing to do here is to check with Brother John. Hi, John. Hi. Hey, John, uh, Susan and Mary say that they had Smokey in the house last night. Do you know anything about that? Well, all I know is yesterday I was working my garden, you know, and just doing, watering my tomatoes, and a stupid dog came along and ate up every single one of my tomatoes, and I chased him away, so I went back to work in my garden. When, and then when I went back to sleep last night, I, uh, I was so tired, I practically sat on him. He was lying in my bed. What do you mean, lying in your bed? You mean to say he might be up in your bed? He is. He is? And here we've been looking for him for two days. You knew that all along? Well, I was trying to find the owner. I didn't think that. I didn't know he was lying. I thought he looked like the uh, the uh, dog, uh, Smokey, who lives around here, but I knew they took good enough care of him not to let him go. What happened? You mean to say that you didn't know that that belonged to the Kempton family? Mm -mm. No. Well, let's go. let me go upstairs and look. Here I am up in John's bedroom. I'm going to look in the room, crying out loud there in John's bed. is Smokey. Hey! We're all so happy here that we found Smokey that we'd like to sing three songs. The first of the songs will be by the Henny children from Puerto Rico who will sing in Spanish, Salic Neat. And now with a one and a two and a three. No. Gee, that was beautiful. Now for the second song, we'd like to have the three Kempton children sing a beautiful song that they've learned from their, their mother who practiced music at the New England Conservatory of Music for 18 years. And children, with a one and a two and a three, go. <laughs> See, that was beautiful from the uh, Kempton kids. And now for the last group, we have the, Kempton, uh, the Burns kids singing a song of their own creation taught to them by their father. Just a minute. One and a two and a three. I know I stand in line and do you think you have the time to spend an evening with me? And if it's an I know that there's a chance you won't be leaving with me. Then afterwards we drop into a quiet little place and have a drink or two. And then I go and fall in love by saying something stupid like I love you. I can see it in your eyes that you just buy the same old line you heard the night before. Although it's just a line to you to me, it's true, it never 
I will you give my head to start get wet and all the night so blue. And then I go and spoil all by saying something stupid like I love you. I can oh, see it in your eyes that you despise the same old lies you heard the night before. And oh, though it gets the lie to you to me, it's so it never seems to lie before. I practice every day to find some clever line to say to make the meeting come true. But what then I think I'll wait until the evening gets late and I'm alone with you. The time is like your perfume till my head to stop get ready and all the night. Blue. And then I go and spoil it all by saying something stupid like I love you. What else can be said after that beautiful rendition from the Hennigs, the Kempton, and the Burnses? With tears in my eyes and with Smokey in my arms, I say good night to you all and pleasant dreams from the home of the Kemptons. Good night, everybody.